God is so powerful that he can do everything you need him to do for you even right now. So when he makes you wait, it means there is a reason. Because there is a reason for everything that happens. And as a believer, the scripture that has been like a bedrock for me is the scripture in Romans chapter 8 that says that everything works together for good to them that love God and to those who were called according to his purpose. Why do I believe this? Because it did not say only good things. And in life, we get to experience the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. So with that, I have hope. So in today's video, I want to speak about why God makes you wait. Hi, I am Owem. This is my YouTube channel. Welcome back and welcome if this is your first time. Point number one, when God makes you wait, he is not wasting your time. I know sometimes, even as believers, you could feel like it is a waste of time. God is wasting my time. Like by this time I should have been here or by this time I should have been there or I should have done this or done that. And in, even in my life personally, you know, I thought that before now I should have been married. This is 2023. And I thought that I would have been married by now. I had planned. I told myself that time would not pass me. I'm going to get married and all of that. And here am I not yet married. Did it mean that God felt me? No, it did not. At first, it bothered me. But then looking back now, I am grateful to God because I realized that I was not ready to be married. Because when I reviewed the mindset I had then and why I wanted to get married, I realized that it would not be an healthy marriage. I would not have an healthy marriage at that time. I wasn't grown. I was still childish. I was still controlling and manipulative. And I did not really know a lot. I didn't know anything like emotional intelligence or any of that. As a young Christian boy, all I wanted was to get the passion out of the way. So the only reason I really wanted to get married then was so I could get the passion out of the way, you know, so you would not sin and, you know, misbehave and all of that. But then God making me wait and making things not fall in place like I thought it would. I've looked back now. And I'm so grateful because I have grown. I can testify to that, that I have grown. I've become a better man. I've become a better person. And here am I saying, when God makes you wait, it's not a waste of time. Because in the process of God making you to wait, he is winning you as if a mother would win a child, which is deprive a child from the breast milk to feed the child with another diet that is more matured. Because this other diet will help the child grow. It will help the child become stronger. And when God takes you through the process of waiting or through the waiting season, God is telling you, I want to change your diet. I want to change you. I want to change your priorities to realign your priorities. My priority for marriage then was passion. And God has realigned my priorities over time. And I realized that the passion is good, but then that is not all there is to it. So I need purpose. I need a partner. I need someone to build legacy with. And I am grown. So same thing with you, whether as a woman or as a man, whatever stage or season you are in your life, God intentionally, or I would say purposefully, make you to wait because he wants to win you. It will deprive you of getting what you want to get you to grow. So think about it this way, that when God makes you wait, God is not wasting your time, but God is working in you every single time. I mean, every single time. God doesn't make anybody wait in vain. Any waiting that he makes any of his child to go through he is making you to wait because he is working in you. As scripture says that it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So how would he work in us if he does not have the time to sit us down and deprive us of something so that we would be weaned? <laughs> it is actually painful and frustrating being made to wait. It's just like you are famished, really hungry. And then there is no food. And even when they are preparing the food, you just waiting for the food and it's taking longer than expected. You go all frantic and, you know, angry and frustrated. Let's go to the scripture in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. It says, 
When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect, blameless, wholehearted, complete. Now, I love this scripture because God said this to Abraham when he made him wait for the promise that he made to him. God promised Abraham he's going to give him a son. In chapter 15 of this Genesis, Abraham told God, are you not going to give me a son? Is it this my servant that will take my inheritance? God said, no, I will still do that. In chapter 17 here, God told him, I know you're waiting. From 75 years old that he was called and given a promise, he is now 99. That is a lot of years in between. And God is still saying, my promise still stands. Are you sure you're going to do this? Because at this point, I know you are a good God. I know you have the power to do it. But why am I waiting? So sometimes you might be in your life and things are happening. And you're like, why are you waiting? I'm waiting for too long. It's harder. It's getting harder waiting. As a lady, you, you desire to marry. And it's like you're growing older and time is no more in your hands. And you're like, God, are you sure? Or should I try other means? And God is saying, walk before me and be perfect, be whole, be complete. What does this really mean? It doesn't mean when you are perfect, you can walk before me or whatever other interpretation. What it clearly says here in this passage is God is saying, walk before my presence and through that, you will become whole. You will become complete. It is God saying, I am walking in you to make you complete when you walk before me, when you walk in my presence, when you are continually with me. And all that it says to me right now is God is saying, stop complaining and start communing. Come out from a place of isolation and get into a place of intimacy with me. I need to get intimate with you because when I'm intimate with you, I will expose things in your heart that are not supposed to be there and take them out. I'm going to win you. I'm going to realign your priorities. This is God speaking to you. And he's saying to you, come out of this transactional obedience and come into a relational obedience. Don't do it because you want me to do something for you. Do it because you know I love you. If I tell you do this or do that or move here or there, do it because I love you, not because you want to get something from me. This is where God wants us when he makes us to wait. Number two, when God makes you wait, he has the perfect time. And we can give ourselves timelines as much as we can but then we cannot control the outcome of events that happens in our life. We cannot control anything. So if you can't control anything, why do we burden ourselves with the timelines? It is good to plan. It is good to strategize. But it is best to trust God while you're planning. Because when you commit your plans to the Lord, the Bible says, He will make your plans to prosper. And I will pause here to say that sometimes it is us as humans that you know, we start disbelieving and doubting God and we get to do things and then those things we get to do causes delay in our journey towards destiny. Because out of desperation, we move into things before God allows us to even step into them. And out of desperation, we cause delay on the timing of when we are supposed to get to where God designs for us. I need to reiterate this, that God is the controller of time. Like time is a construct that is in God's hands. God is not unaware of everything that happens in life. He is fully aware. So God putting you in a position, it takes him nothing. It doesn't even take him anything. Scripture tells us that we have a father whose a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day to him. So if this is like this, you know that to him, he is outside of time, looking into time and being like, this is my child, if you obey me, I'm going to shift you to align with my timing. And that is all we need. We just need to be shifted to align with God's timing for our lives. I read this text in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8, and it was so intriguing. It says, now then tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock and appointed you ruler over my people, Israel. Now I say this scripture intrigues me because somehow this is how we want life to be. This is how we view life, literally. 
we presume sometimes that life should just be a linear path whereby like god said here to david i took you from the sheep fold from the pasture to the palace to be a ruler and we would say from the prison to the palace and then we assume that that is how life is but you have to go back to the context and know when the scripture says i took you from the pasture to the palace there was an in between and the in between was time time david was anointed king but then there was another king on the throne in the process of him waiting he had opportunity to kill saul had it been david was desperate he would have killed saul to assume the throne but he knew better because he has gone to become intimate with god touch not my anointed he knew better he said i cannot touch whom the lord has anointed even when this person was seeking his life to destroy so you can see the reason why god would not waste your time when he makes you wait because he wants to get you to change your priorities and change your mindset and not be desperate so david in this place has come to accept god's timing and then why i even read that scripture was the intriguing part of us getting to see that when the scripture says from prison to palace there was a journey in between so we want god to just take us from where we are right now to where we want to be and god is like there's still a journey inside of it and then i need you to be in the right place at the right time and all we need to do as humans is just to embrace god's timing whereby we embrace and practice his presence in the story of joseph in genesis so it's actually a sad story that joseph with all his dreams and potentials was sold by his own family members as a slave and being sold as a slave he was accused wrongly and thrown into prison so his life at this point he would have already given up hope if not that he practiced the presence of god and every way scripture says and the lord was with joseph and he was successful and the lord was with joseph and he prospered this is why in the waiting god wants you to realize one thing the practice of his presence you walking before him so that you can become whole because from joseph's story upon all the things he went through you can see that this guy was whole he was healthy from the inside now joseph is in the prison with these two prisoners the king's chief cup bearer and baker and he interpreted dreams for them and after joseph interpreted the dream of the chief cup bearer he told him and please remember me and do me a favor when things go well for you mention me to pharaoh so he might let me out of this place pharaoh's chief cup bearer however forgot all about joseph never giving him another thought now this is where i say god made him forget about joseph because god made joseph wait all joseph wanted in this verse was mention me to pharaoh so that they can remove me from this place his mind being limited as a human would not even think that there is somewhere ahead of him that he is at the right place at the right time that god is trying to keep him because in the next two years something is going to happen that his dreams all his dreams will be fulfilled and somehow that is how it is in our life because we have these dreams and these hopes and when we get into situations we are like god where are you in this place where are you in this prison where are you in this burden that i'm carrying where are you in this situation like this and we might forget that that might actually be the right place right time it is a tension not easy to accept because sometimes your right place right time might look so uncomfortable that you might want to run out of it and forget that god is keeping you there for a reason if it is god that makes you to wait now this is why i believe god made joseph wait and made the guy to forget about him because after two years of this guy's release pharaoh had a dream and scripture says in that genesis chapter 41 two full years later pharaoh dreamed Finally, the king's chief cup bearer spoke up. Today, I have been reminded of my failure, he told Pharaoh. Now, it is nothing like a coincidence because it is God. Had it been he remembered Joseph before these two years, Joseph might have been released from the prison, but he would have been released from God's promise 
from for his life. And sometimes that we we pray to God to release us from some things that is difficult, we may not know that it is actually God. That is why we need to be praying, let God's will be done in our lives and learn to accept God's timing and God's dealing and his thoughts. Because it says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. We are human, limited, flawed. God is perfect, all sufficient. So why not trust him? It is not easy. It is easier said than done. Three, when God makes you wait, God wants you to grow. Now, there is this thing you need to know that in the waiting season, all God is doing in you is to make you mature, to make you grow, to prepare you for what he has ahead of you. Now, to not take too much time on this point, the same Joseph in that Genesis, the scripture made us to know that in the prison, these two guys, the cupbearer and the baker, were given to Joseph as his responsibility. That was Joseph's responsibility to take care of them, to look after them. Now, you will tell me that this guy is in prison undeservedly. Why would he not be bitter? Why should he not be angry and full of rage? But then that was not who he was in the prison, even in the prison. Instead, he chose to love. And that to me is a picture of a grown man. Because notwithstanding everything that he, he went through, he did not allow the things surrounding him and the things he went through to contaminate his heart. He did not allow the condition outside of him to contaminate the condition inside of him. Most times that is where we make mistakes because the condition outside of us ends up eating inside of us and contaminates the person in us and changes our personhood from the good heart to a wicked heart. From a good heart to a heart that is hateful. And God says, I want you to grow. I'm making you to wait because there are some things I want to push out of your heart. I'm making you to wait because I want to build your integrity. I want to make you a man or a woman of integrity. And as I was thinking about this, when Joseph was actually the one who helped these guys, a thought came to me. Don't you even think of the aspect that your destiny helper might be someone you get to help first. Actually, it's in the story. Because Joseph got to help the cup bearer first, interpreting his dream and helping him out. After then, the cup bearer ended up helping him to introduce him. So you do not know how God works. All you need to know is when he makes you wait, know that he wants to make you grow. The text in Genesis chapter 40 verse 5 to 7 says, While they were in prison, Pharaoh's cup bearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, now first of all, he woke up, seeing them, scripture says this, he noticed that they both looked upset. He could notice them. Now, he had his own problems to think about and be moody, and he saw other people who were upset waking up, he could notice them. Secondly, the scripture says, he asks them, why do you look so worried today? Now, this shows a picture of a man who is caring and loving and compassionate. And you cannot tell me anything else other than the fact that this man is a grown man. And that could be said of you, that you are a grown woman, that your situation has not infected you, but instead, it's making you become a better person. You are glowing with joy. You're not actually pretending. This is who you are. You are really a lovable person, a loving person. And lastly, when God makes you wait, God wants to strengthen you. Now, there's a thing God does in our waiting, which is to build in us the capacity that will take us to where he wants us to go. Because most times we might want to get somewhere or to get the promise God has for us, but we are not ready because we are not strong. And most of the time, God will take us through the process of waiting and trusting him and hoping on him for us to be built up and refined and become grown and strong. Because it is in this process of waiting for God to visit us and all waiting on God that God will use to take us from our weaknesses and strengthen our weaknesses, strengthen our bones and make us 
stronger for the future that he has ahead of us. Scripture says in Isaiah 40, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. Mount up to the sun, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. I hope this video has spoken to you that there is something valuable that you will pick from this video. So if there is, let me know in the comment section which part of this video really spoke to you or to your situation that when God makes you wait, he has a reason. So I believe these four points would at least give you a glimpse to why God allows you to wait for the particular promise that you are asking him to bring to pass in your life. Whether it's the desire of getting married, whether it's the desire of getting the employment, of getting a job, of building the company, or doing whatsoever thing you want to do in any area of your life. And I hope that this video will help you to, you know, get yourself up and dust yourself up and get to work with God so that you would not delay the process of your waiting. Instead, he will help you through his spirit and his grace for you to work with him and get to fulfill your destiny and work and have a better life. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.